Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to the Personal Economy series, Your Wealth and Beyond, brought to you by HSBC Premier in partnership with CNBC TV18. Now the series explores the things that matter the most to us, in effect, our personal economy. On earlier episodes, we looked at some of these aspects, career, home, education, passions and what they mean to us. And on this episode, we're putting the spotlight on experiences and the enriching value they add to our lives. Ormus Mehta is a corporate lawyer at one of India's leading law firms. Well, I would just hate living in, in, the, in the four walls that you always are in. We're so engrossed in our own little lives, in our work, in, in what's happening with, with ourselves. Then nobody wants to know what's happening outside. And there's a lot in the city which you can do outside. Neville Poncha and his family make the most of their free time by taking off on vacations. Our first holiday with our family was to Singapore. Uh, we chose Singapore at that time because it actually had all the, the bird park and the zoo. And uh, the children were a bit uh, younger at that time. And being in a city it meant we didn't really have to travel a lot. So we had the advantage of uh, being able to be in a city and also take them to places of interest. And since Singapore also had the universal theme park, we sort of got you know the best of everything in one uh, small holiday. For us, it actually began when we were kids. My dad used to take us to Lunavla every weekend religiously. And when we used to go there, we used to always want to climb like all the mountains we saw. Like, we want to climb that one and we want to climb this one. And my dad used to always like hold our hand and take us all the way up. And he used to teach us that you can suck on limestone so that you don't feel thirsty. And that's how actually we started the full going out, going up to Bushi Dam, Valvan Dam, all the little dams in Lonavla, hiking up all the mountains and all of that. We started group hikes about two years ago and when we started it, it was just a simple message sent out to people saying, hey listen, going for a hike, are you interested? And everybody was so eager to come for hikes because this is stuck in the city, stuck in, this, in the rut of, of work in Bombay and everybody wants to get out. So suddenly we were like, first hike was about five people, then it became ten. The last hike we went for about 40 people went on together, then we went to some other one like just after the monsoons ended and there were about 18 of us again over there. So everyone who we speak to, they all want to get out of the city, see some greenery, see something different, do things differently and hiking is, is not that far. It's literally a 45 minute journey from Bombay. You're in one of the mountains, you can be on top of them, you get the you get beautiful views, you get a nice walking path, you get to be part of nature. Well, the main idea is that they see various places. Uh, they see the local culture to some extent. Uh, luckily, the boys aren't too fussy about food, so they actually like to try out new food and they're quite uh, enthusiastic, as enthusiastic as we are about you know eating different things. So that's good. And they also uh, want to go to the odd amusement park. And uh, the only thing they don't really like too much is going to museums which is understandable at that age. So that's basically what we really like to do. And also we try to put in a cruise with one holiday. So that is another experience which they uh, like a lot. People are starting to look at any activity they do as an experience. Earlier, for example, I'll give a very small example. It could be watching a movie. Now that's an activity you do. It was, not, it was never regarded as an experience. Now people make an experience out of it. 
How do they do that? They actually make an experience out of it by saying, it's not just a movie. I bundle that with something else. I take the family along. I actually take some friends and, and friends friends along. And, and it's not just a three-hour movie. It becomes almost a five to six-hour whole event, and they build an experience around it. That's just a very small example. But now people are starting to look at more exotic experiences. Okay? And exotic experiences could be as exotic as bungee jumping in New Zealand. Okay? That's an experience that people dream of. Uh, never had the ability to plan for it before. But now they do. And people don't restrict themselves to one experience. Time for a short break. On the other side, Neville and family and Hormus continue to share how experiences enrich their lives. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Personal Economy series, Your Wealth and Beyond, brought to you by HSBC Premier in partnership with CNBC TV 18. Now, our experiences provide an intangible value to our lives. They shape our worldview and are very often the things that motivate us. If you have to do this, you have to make time for it. And you want to see what's happening outside. You don't want to get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm just going to put my legs up and watch TV. That you can do any time of the week. But this is something which is the one day of the week or the two days of the week that you get. You've got to go somewhere. You've got to explore the city, explore its surroundings, explore what's outside. And there's a lot that can be done. Uh, well, it will give them a fresh perspective. You know, they see a lot of places in the movies and whenever they see a place in the movie which they've been to, they sort of quite like it and they can understand what, what, you know, a particular park or a particular bridge or a particular city is about. So it's basically giving them a, a different experience to what they see in, in Bombay every day. The key is to go to sleep early, as in I don't practice that that much, but honestly if you can sleep early, you have such a productive weekend. Weekends are the only time you actually get to yourself. It's, it's very difficult to otherwise get time during the, during the working week. And if you're up by about 6.37 and you just step outside, you will see half the city is awake. The many people actually out there doing so much at that, at that time as well that you realize that there's so much more you can also do. And then you just realize that if you have to do it, you will do it. And once you get that passion into you, you get that, that motivation to do things, you start doing things automatically every weekend. You start doing more and you start doing more and you realize, oh my God, this is so good. Let me just go there. And then you read about this and somebody tells you about that. And like, oh, God, I got to try that. I got to go see flamingos. I got to go to mount that mountain. I have to see that lake. All these things are there and it's just literally an hour away from Bombay. When we do this planning with people uh, for our clients, they come up with saying, these are the different types of experiences that we want to do. And many people plan to say, I have a list, you know, what we call a bucket list. 100 countries to visit before I die. Or these are the 30, 40 experiences I'd like to do. And I'd like to do that once a year. I'd like to do that once in six months. So they sit with the, the financial advisor and say, okay, these are my 20 experiences. I'd like to do all of this. It could be a hot air balloon in Fiji. Uh, it could be, like I said, bungee jumping somewhere else. It could be a Kenyan safari. But they do all of that and they tick mark each one of them at, at, at a timeline in their own life, uh, uh, life cycle. It's becoming very interesting because um, it's what they wanted to do. It, it's not just a passion. A passion is probably one thing that you that you are really passionate about. And experience is multiple passions in a smaller manner. So multiple small, small activities, but each one of them is when you know when you retire or maybe some last five years of your life you want to think back and say okay what were those real memorable moments in my life those are the experiences that people need to plan for uh, a work may not always be that one but a work along with something else is is really what people are planning for that's the experience that we want to try and get people to um, 
we want them to experience it. Yeah, the kids, uh, I tell them to also go to various websites and uh, send them the various links and then they actually have a look and see what, what is there for them. Uh, one thing which they do a lot is actually to check out the various height restrictions at amusement parks. So that becomes a bit of an important thing for them because they can't go for certain rides. So depending on their height, they can go for the rides. Mm -hmm. so calm. It's honestly one of the most peaceful experiences because you literally see the world from a height as to all the hustle bustle. You realize that down there it's all the hustle bustle, the noise, the chaos, the traffic, all of that. And when you're up there that it's so peaceful, it's so serene. So even though you're up there for like maybe an hour, maybe two hours stops, you're having a sandwich up there and you're just looking, looking down and you see clouds below you. And you realize that there's so much more that, that, that's there to offer. And when you come back, you're like, wow, this is like a peaceful sort of therapy, therapeutic moment I've just had. Time for a short break. When we return, involving loved ones in planning our experiences. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, on earlier episodes, we saw some of the key takeaways from the recently held Personal Economy Summit, Your Wealth and Beyond, brought to you by HSBC Premier in partnership with CNBC TV18. Experts from various fields shared their thoughts on the things that matter the most to us. One such session covered enriching our lives after 40. Increasingly, I think what is happening in India is that we want not just riches in a physical sense, but an enrichment of life. And that means growing not just in the vertical sense of the word, but horizontally, in, as people. There is a freedom that this generation has that never existed before. You can think about yourself. In the early days, the, the definition of success was had a career, but but choko settle kar diya. But choko settle kar diya means you're now you're ready to retire. You're you're ready to be done with life. Increasingly, now you are not done with life. So you are still have to plan. And to me, that's the exciting part about this stage right now. It's an exciting part because you you have the opportunity of 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 writing a new script for yourself. You have the opportunity of of, in, in a sense, finding multiple pursuits, uh, which are, to my mind, increasingly the order of the day. You know, I find it interesting, if you look at the earlier day, when you described a person, or a person described himself or herself, you would describe yourself as a banker. You know, as you would, you would have a, what do you do? The answer was, I'm a banker, I'm a teacher, I'm a sports person. Increasingly, look at the Twitter bios of today. Nobody has a one-line Twitter bio. Nobody is merely a banker. They are bankers, they are foodies, they are jazz enthusiasts, they are deep-sea divers in ideas. You have all kinds of incredible descriptions of what people do. You don't do one thing. You do many things. To my mind, if I had to distill it down and end with what I saw, you know, as a great opportunity was, was the fact that here's a stage in life where, where, you know, you have choices, you have the ability to genuinely enrich, you know, uh, your life. That's our great opportunity, not money, but enrichment. And I think that's, personally, I find that a goal that is worth pursuing. We are off to Japan and Hong Kong. Uh, the kids haven't seen uh, Japan uh, and neither have we. So we thought that's a very different place from the normal places we've been to in the US and Europe. Uh, so we're looking uh, forward to that. Uh, for Japan, we took the help of a friend of ours who actually organizes tours and took his inputs as to what are the places to go to. 
because it's a bit difficult to understand all the local stuff in Japan because of the names and the language. So that's one place we've taken a bit of external help to decide as to where all we should go. Collect water. It's it's one of the best ways I think because you get to see a whole different sort of a place and you get to exercise the body. Next morning you're sore, some people are sore, some people are sore for a week and all of that. But it's it's a great way to like just get out there, enjoy the enjoy yourself, do things with your friends and all of that. And now people are taking health a lot more seriously. They're taking a lot more, pushing themselves a lot more to get out there, do things and all of this. So I think it's it's happening slowly. So there is a cost uh, to fulfill that experience. And there's a benefit of that experience as well. Uh, you can't monetize it very easily, but you have to put a price to it. Um, and I do it personally to say that if I need to experience something else, what's that worth to me? Uh, and we encourage our clients to talk about it, to say, don't just look at it as saying, okay, I spent a, one lakh, a uh, hundred thousand rupees on this. Because probably the experience that you get or the thrill that you get of spending the time with your loved ones in going through that experience is a lot more than that hundred thousand rupees. Uh, so people have to balance it out. They also need to plan between experiences in the short term, in the medium term and the long term all three of them are, are very different and your financial ability to fund each one of them is very different so you may want to have an experience that you can have in the next one week i may say okay today is a thursday i want to do something on a sunday and i, I can do that by swiping my credit card because that's a financial ability available with me but there may be something else that my card cannot afford and that may be a medium term goal or it may even be a long term goal that's again comes back to planning to say what experience at what time how much is it going to cost me how much is it how much am i going to value it and again when i whenever i keep saying how much am i i keep saying how much can my family value it the family needs to come together for that experience they've also become very good at packing their stuff and uh, you know they are able to be a little more organized they know you know how to make sure their papers are organized in terms of their passports, they'll carry everything, we'll all keep copies of each other's passports in all our bags in case anything gets lost and stuff like that. And you know, they're very helpful in terms of packing, picking up stuff. In between, I had a bit of a back problem, they helped me with the bags and stuff like that. Honestly, the next Monday, when you go back to work, you, you can see how much more productive you are because you've had a productive weekend. And it's, it's not a weekend which tires you, it's a, it's a weekend that actually wakes you up. So, you know, you feel excited about it, you, want, you realize there's so much more that's there outside. That on a Monday morning again, you're like, okay, back to work, but I'm a happy person to go back to work. Well, happy Mondays indeed is great motivation for a weekend trek. But that's all the time that we have on this episode. Stay tuned to the series as we continue to explore the things that matter the most to us in our personal economy. Until next time from the entire team, many thanks for watching. Focus. Innovate. Enable.